coffee. Are you sure? And you fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> my family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. Sometimes I go picking with my boyfriend, sometimes it's my best friend Sue, and sometimes it's my kids. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and hopefully just maybe making a profit. Okay, out on the table here in front of me, I have everything from yesterday's shopping visit to Warsaw, New York. I was just passing through on my way home from Canada and happened to stop and they had like a zillion antique shops in this small little town. So we stopped at a few, a few were closed, but we made out pretty well. And right now I'm gonna talk about everything that we got, what I paid for it, and what I can expect to get for it, either on eBay or Etsy. But those of you who follow me know I've been doing a lot of listings on eBay these days. So if you see anything you like, that's probably where you can find it. <laughs> so I'm gonna be putting these listings up probably this evening from when you're seeing this video. Um, but let's go over real quick everything we got. So the first antique shop that we went to was amazing. <laughs> I walked in and the prices there were basically thrift store prices. I could not believe it because the items were all antique and vintage. So I kind of had a little bit of a field day and I probably could have gotten a lot more things while I was there, but I was trying to restrain myself because I didn't want to come home with too much stuff because as you guys know, the entire time I was in Canada, I didn't have anything listed and so it's just starting to pile up. So we're gonna go over this, the items that really caught my eye and the items that I gravitated towards. And um, let's start over here. We're gonna start on this side with this little guy right here. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you probably know what this is. I paid 50 cents for this. And this is Morton Pottery. This is actually a sampler uh, that Morton Pottery did for a paint company. So you can see the swirls on there. This was just a sampler that they put out, uh, the paint company, but they, I've seen them in all different colors. The paints can be diff you know, different variations. This is actually kind of a pretty one. It's just pale, pale blues and gray and paid 50 cents for it. They sell anywhere from 20 to $30. So for 50 cents, that's not too bad. <laughs> pretty pleased with that. So just sitting on the shelf and I don't know how I missed it the first time I walked by it, but the second time I grabbed it. Now let's talk about these. I paid $5 for these. Now somebody had suggested that these are nut dishes. I kind of started questioning myself, but I don't believe these are nut dishes. I know they're graduated and, and it's possible that I'm wrong. But the reason that I lean towards calling these ashtrays is because of this little indent on the corners where you would put your cigarettes. I mean, that's always what I thought of when I think of ashtrays is the little indents on the corners. So there's three of them here and they're all graduated sizes, but each one is hand painted with florals and it's kind of, it's a milk glass, but it's, it's like a creamy milk glass. It's not your typical white, white milk glass. So there is no mark on the bottom. Paid $5 for these. I would expect probably to get, I want to say 25 to 35 for those. And you know, the person who buys them might not even be a smoker. It's possible they could use these because of these little indents on the edges. You could use them for paintbrushes. Uh, I know a lot of my viewers are like, oh, I could use that ashtray as a paint as a paintbrush holder. So I think that would be perfect for those. those. Um, but yeah, I really liked those. I don't know why. I don't know. Uh, but moving right along, let's talk about this. This is the, just a little Japanese vase. It's got a light green color and it's got these orange handles. The artwork isn't the best on it. Uh, it's kind of sloppy, but it was like the one item in the entire shop that didn't have a price on it. So of course I picked it up and she gave it to me for $2 but it's got a butterfly on it and it's cute. For $2, I think I can make probably 15, 10 to 15 on it. So it's a pretty good turnaround. 
Oh, the little black kitty with the green eyes. Uh, I just thought it was cute. You guys know I have a thing for cats. And usually they're the big ceramic cats. This is just a little itty bitty ceramic cat. More than likely made in Japan. However, it is not marked made in Japan. Uh, paid 50 cents for this. I would probably expect to get five to twelve dollars usually when i buy black cats they go pretty well i do i do well with black cats i've got a thing for black cats i used to have one so i just I like black kitties um okay this now this would be considered majolica but this is japanese majolica it's got this basket weave uh we talk about that a lot it's this texture right here you can see it's weave it's got nice handles uh mid-century more than likely i don't see a price oh i paid a dollar for this i only paid this is what i'm saying this is like thrift store prices for an antique shop i could not believe that i paid a dollar for this i could probably get 20 to 25 dollars for this despite you know even though it's japan i could still make 20 to 25 dollars now if it was made in portugal or, you know, something like that. I could probably expect to get a little bit more for it, but Japan Majolica doesn't do quite as well as, ooh, my phone's making noise. Um, J Japan Majolica doesn't do as well as the stuff from Portugal. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you come across Majolica. I finally figured out how to put my phone on silent. You guys should be really proud of me because it only took me like three months of having that phone. Just for this video too. So anyway, um, let's talk about, I'm saving these for last. Let's talk about this dish. Now it is marked, it's marked Czechoslovakia. It's got a pearly finish and it's got kind of this orange detailing on it. It's nothing spectacular. It's no great ceramic house. It's just ultra law. I don't even know how to pronounce it. But it's a really cute dish. It would look nice next to you then, you know, walk in the door, throw your keys in there. Uh, this I could probably sell between $25 and $35, you know, just for the value of being a bowl. I paid $5 for it, so I'm going to make money on that. But the name that comes with it doesn't really increase the value any. It's just being sold as a bowl. Sometimes you get a really nice maker on there and it's like, oh, I can make a ton of money on this because so-and-so made it. But it's just a random maker. So fortunately, we're not going to make a whole lot on that. But let's talk about our glass bowls because these were the most exciting and I almost missed them because they were actually in the front of the store and they were in a glass case. And I didn't really actually look in the glass case as I was walking around until I was about to leave. And I have to be walking by and I think it, I saw this one first and I was like, oh, that's really nice. And then I got a little closer and I saw this one underneath it. So let's talk about these. These are Murano art glass. Now there is a lot of Chinese art glass and I have put some on eBay recently. I've told you guys, you know, I can't say this is Murano because I don't believe it is, but these I can say with a 100% certainty that these are Murano. Unfortunately, they are not signed and I do not know the maker. There were quite a few glass masters, but I could not tell you which one made these. Um, this looks like the work possibly of Seguso, uh, but it could also be Borovier or Toso. So I'm not really sure. But it's just a fabulous bowl. It's got really nice weight to it. It's very high quality. You don't see a lot of inclusions in it like you would if it was made in China. So I'm just super pleased with this. Now, Murano glass is made in Murano, Italy. So if you say it's Murano glass, it's made um, in Venice. It's made in Venice. Um, so you can't have a piece that's made in China and call it Murano glass. In that case, it's just art glass. So if I was to be selling a piece of glass and I couldn't say with certainty where it was made, I would just call it art glass. But this is the other piece I picked up. This one is kind of a pink, but it's a white on the outside. So it's kind of a cased glass. This one is, it's got this gold 
gold flake which I really like and and it's a lavender it's kind of a light pink lavender and I paid 50 for this I paid 18 dollars for this one. So I paid a little bit more for this one but they're beautiful bowls no chips no cracks I could probably expect to get at least 35 to 45 dollars for them I would expect to get more uh, but without knowing exactly who the artist was who made them I'm just gonna have to list them and let you know people who are stocking the Murano glass listings on there say oh my god there's a bowl listed by so and so and so and then let them bid it up so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna list these as Murano art glass bowls and see how they do but yeah I know I can at least get between 35 and 45 dollars for these just because they're beautiful and they're mid-century and they're gonna do well so last and final we're going to talk about our coffee set I do believe this is a coffee set now I wanted to call it a tea set but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that this is a coffee pot and not a teapot teapots are usually like short and stout <laughs> and coffee pots are a little bit taller so i'm going to call this a coffee pot now it is marked bavaria uh, saltman whedon and uh the pattern is i sold but the reason i liked this so much and i don't know if the ring light's gonna let you guys see it probably not there we go. Oh yes, I just have to hold it really close. So if you can see the pattern here, there's these these little colored uh, squares in there. It it kind of reminded me of the work of Frank Lloyd Wright, who was a famous architect. I saw that and I was like, yeah. It, it just reminded me of his work with the just the colored rectangles. So. I also like the lines of the pieces you can see here. It's just very simple lines. And it's mid-century modern, I'll take it. It's wonderful. So there is some pieces listed, some sets I should say. We have a creamer and a sugar. We've got the pot. We have two tea cap, teacup, coffee cups two saucers and two dessert plates so we have service for two um and there are some listed not very many sold and none in this pattern i couldn't find any listed in this pattern specifically i would expect to get at least 55 dollars for this other sets are listed at 120 dollars and up which i say listed they're not sold and i think that's being a little optimistic because there's not very many people out there who still do tea party coffee parties i mean they're usually just display pieces um so i would say probably 55 dollars and upwards but i just loved this set and i paid 25 dollars for it it took me forever to track down somebody to buy it from because i thought at first maybe the whole place was abandoned uh, if you guys watch the shopping video i'm wandering aimlessly looking for somebody to take my money um, but <laughs> I eventually found them and I bought this set, but I think that's pretty much, oh, and I bought this, this little vase. I don't know if this is a snuff bottle. Andrew. What? Is this a snuff bottle? He's actually sitting there watching me film the whole video. Just so you all know he's creeping. That's all they get. <laughs> a little snuff bottle? Or do you think it's a little bud vase? A little bud vase. Okay. It's really cute. It is cute. And snuff bottles kind of are the same size, roughly. So that's why I wasn't really sure. But it is a gift for Sue for watching Bird. And I paid only 50 cents for it. Shh, don't tell her. <laughs> I know. I, wonder, I, I posted the video today and I'm thinking, I wonder if she watched the video today i know sometimes she gets busy and she doesn't always have an opportunity to watch the videos but i was like oh crap i forgot about that so um but it'll still be a nice little gift so anyway so i got this for sue but i mean that's really everything that we got in warsaw 
Um, I was really pleased and I wished that the other antique shops were open because that would have been awesome of course then I would have been even later getting home because I'm like yeah I'll be home by six and then I stopped and I just barely made it by six so it was probably a good thing that the other shops weren't open but I would love to go back there and actually look around some more and maybe look at some of the other antique shops because I actually have family that is from Warsaw so uh, I didn't know that when I passed through it the first time, but I have actually been there a few times when I was really young. And so I think driving through there, it was like some subconscious level, oh my gosh, I love this little town because I've been there before and I didn't realize it and I didn't put it together, but um, a very cute little town and I enjoyed my visit there. But I think that pretty much sums it up. It's late if you guys can't tell my energy level is like way down here. <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tomorrow is a brand new bins video and we absolutely killed it. Like best video ever, right Andrew? Mmm, pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So, that's right, Andrew's in the video too. So make sure you tune in tomorrow for the bins video. I'm so excited to bring you guys that video because I, it's it was just shocking. What are you doing? Coffee. Oh, coffee. Oh, now you're coming over to... Coffee? Are you sure? And you fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't smell coffee. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. And so will Andrew. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you've spotted something that you just can't live without, don't worry. I've put a link to our Etsy store down in the description.